Okay guys, so I've got something that I think is pretty cool today. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it brief, but uh, it might be a bit difficult because there's a fair bit to cover here. What I want to talk about is a way of creating a page by page mode switches for classes on the body tag. Um, so you can enable or disable features on a page by page basis. Uh, and I'm going to be using a few well-known things today. I'm going to use uh, Jet Engine meta boxes. Uh, you can use anything you like, pods, toolkit, ACF, whatever you like. It's up to you. It's the same principle. I just happen to have and like Jet Engine, so I use that. Um, I'm using the Scripts Organizer plugin uh, for managing my custom PHP, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, there's not a lot of that, so that's good. Um, use WP Code Box or whatever you like to use. Uh, and I'm going to use Bricks Builder, although the same principles apply regardless of your builder. The only thing that would change is the way you structure your CSS to target. So I'm going to look at an example header. Now, if we look at this page here, we've got a simple header with a logo, my get logo, home page, and a test grids page. And they're all using, or both using the same header. Now, if I look at the actual header, it is a standard bricks header. I've actually got two logos in here, which I'll explain shortly. Um, and in this header, I've got my standard settings with my background set to this dark gray color. Uh, in the template settings, I'm not using any of the settings in here, so I'm not using the sticky header settings. Uh, and the reason I'm not doing that is because I want to control this on a per page basis, not a site wide. Uh, one typical way people might manage different headers for different pages is to create multiple headers and set conditions so that they appear on certain pages. Uh, this is a way of using one header and being able to apply it differently to different pages. So simple, straightforward header. I'll come back to this uh, two logos and why I've done that a little bit later. All right, so if I look at my home page, right, standard header with a dark gray background and it scrolls away as I scroll the page. Uh, if I wanted to change that behavior, all I have to do is go in here and say, I want it to be an overlay header. So these are my jet engine options. Uh, I want it to be an overlay. I'll update that, refresh the page. Now I've got a transparent background because I've got it set to absolute and I've got rid of the background. Same header, go to my test grid page and it hasn't affected at all. But on my home page, it is affected. So let's say I want that to be a fixed header. Simply change that switch. And now it's a fixed header. And as I scroll, I get a background coming in. As I scroll away, the background disappears. So I can see the uh, image in the background behind it. So all I've done is flick a switch. Uh, at the moment, you see my WP Get logo. If I flick this switch here to alternate logo, hit update, refresh. Now I've got my WP Easy logo. Yet on my test grids page, I've still got WP Get. Again, it's exactly the same header template. All I'm changing is these switches here. So you can add whatever you want here, add as many of these switches as you want, and then create CSS rules to work with when those are applied to the body tag. So pretty cool. I think it's a really good way to uh, work. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you how this is done. So the first thing we'll look at is the, uh, the uh, meta box. So I'm using a jet engine. Again, you can use whatever you like. I've created a single meta box called page uh, options, uh, which I've applied to all pages. And I've got a single meta field, which is my jet page options. It's my slug there, so jet page options. And I've got four options on there, which is my uh, overlay enabled, my fixed header, my alternate logo, and alternate theme, which I'm not showing in this demo here. Now, what I'm doing with these is I've got a display name and I've got a option value. The option value I'm putting here is actually gonna be the same as the class name that we will target. So what I will do is I've got a PHP script that'll go through these 
and if any of these and if they're enabled it will add that as a class to the header so if I enable my fixed header it will enable this as a class on my header so let's actually have a look at that so if I come back to my page have a look at the header uh, sorry the body and see I've got here but F overlay header, F fixed header, F alt logo. I go to my pages here and I get rid of my alt logo and my fixed header. I've just got the overlay. And refresh. And look at my classes now. Now I've only got F overlay header. So the other two classes have been switched off by simply switching off these switches. So let's head over to the actual code that makes this happen. Again, you can use whatever code manager you want. I like Scripts Organizer. Uh, I like the way it works. I like the fact we create a single code block. And on that code block, we've got our PHP and also we've got some JavaScript in the footer, all linked to the same code block. That's one of the features I really like about this plugin. So here's my simple class, sorry, my simple function and callback to turn those uh, meta fields into uh, body classes. So all I'm doing is looking at my typical WordPress body class hook. I'm getting my post meta. So Jet Engine stores all the metadata as standard WordPress post meta. And the meta is under Jet Page Options. So you recall back here, uh, my Jet Page Options is my meta field. The checkboxes are, the, um, are on that one meta field. Okay, so that's the, that's the meta I want to get. Um, I'm creating an empty array for my new classes. Um, if it is an array, in other words, we've got things set, which it should be, we're going to use the array walk function, and we're going to go through our meta um, with uh, anonymous functions like this. You could create a function for a callback if you want to access um, any um, variables that are outside of that scope. You have to use the use property. So I'm telling it to use my new classes. Whoops, drag and drop, mess that up. Use my new classes variable inside this anonymous function. So that just makes it accessible. Little and just makes it um, a reference. So it's gonna pass by reference. So when we're looking at that and making any additions to it, it's actually accessing this uh, outside of the scope class here. So all we're doing is going through each item um, with the array walk. Uh, if it's set to a boolean true, so Jet Engine stores, uh, sorry, not a boolean, a string true, um, Jet Engine stores a uh, true or false on checkboxes as a string true or string false, not a boolean true or boolean false. So we've got to put that inside quotes. Uh, if it is set to true, we want to add the key to our new classes. Now the key is going to be these F overlay header, F fixed header. Okay. So that adds those, merge the existing body classes with the new classes, so anything that's checked, um, and that is what adds to our uh, homepage here. Yeah, that's what adds the classes to our homepage. So a very, very simple way of simple function. You want more options, you just add more options, automatically adds the classes when you check them. And then we just gotta create CSS rules to do something with those. All right, so the next bit on here is a bit of um, uh, JavaScript. Now we have to do this because we're not using the bricks or element or whatever we're using. We're not using their header um, scripts because we want to control this on a per page basis, not on a site-wide basis for the header. We've got a very simple JavaScript here. We're setting the amount of pixels we want to detect, detect the scroll by. In this case, I've said 200 pixels listening to the, uh, the scroll events on document. If the scroll Y is greater than the scroll figure I've got up here, add the scroll class to the body. Uh, otherwise, remove the scroll class from the body. So what we'll see here is uh, at the moment, there's no scroll class on body. If I scroll more than two pix 200 pixels, it's just added the scrolled to my uh, body class. If we have fixed header enabled here, okay, and then we look at our body classes here, there's no scrolled, 
scroll by 200 pixels, we get scrolled. Okay, and then I've got a black background behind this header. Now, if we look at the actual CSS for that, I'm looking over here in my Chrome DevTools. So what we're doing is our CSS is targeting a body when it's got a fixed header and scrolled. So fixed header is added by our, our PHP. Scrolled is add, added by our JavaScript. We want to target the bricks header section. And we want to set the background color to this transparent black. Okay, and we're going to transition that over a, a duration so that it sort of fades in a little bit. So it fades in quickly and fades out at a slower rate. All right, so that's all we're doing. So just switching body classes and then we're using CSS rules to decide what to do with those classes. So if I head back over to my code box, so that's all there is to this. I'll actually make these available to you as a uh, file. Um, so you can use them in whatever code manager you want. Uh, so there's one other thing we want to look at here, which is the utilities for this. And you'll see all I'm interested in is in this section here. Uh, so all I'm doing, again, this is bricks. If you are working with Elementor, then this part here, the body.f overlay header and the body.fixed header, um, that will be the same. The path after that, uh, hold on, we need to get rid of that because that was messing up in the editor, I forgot about that. Um, the path after that will be relevant to what your structure is in your page builder, uh, for example, Element or whatever you use. All right, so all we're doing here is saying if we have an overlay header, so if our checkbox is checked for overlay header, we want to position the section absolutely, make it 100% with. Z index, 10, Z index of 10 and remove the background. Okay, that's all that's doing. So switch, sticks on the body, remove the background, absolutely position it. If we also have our fixed on there, we want to then set the position to fixed. And we want to have a transition on the background back over a slow variable. This could be whatever you like. Uh, I can't remember what my slow variable is for this, but just a whatever period of time that is. Um, yeah, you can have a fixed value here if you want. So that's for when we're not scrolled. So it will scroll when we are, when we scroll and then scroll back to the top. It's going to transition back to transparent uh, over the slow duration if both uh, if the body has both the overlay header and the fixed header. And then we've got a class here where when we've got fixed header added by PHP and scrolled added by JavaScript, we're going to target that differently. Uh, again, and we're going to set our background color to this slightly transparent black over a normal transition. So this here is all we need to make that transparent header work uh, like this um, using those uh, body classes. This is taking a long time, sorry, but uh, there's a lot to explain. All right, now the next bit, uh, which was a little bit trickier, was the uh, looking at the... Um, alternate logo. So in Bricks, you have conditionals. So what I'm doing is this, with this first logo, um, it's actually, I'm not sure why it's displaying like that there, um, but my, my logo is my WP Get logo. In my second one, my logo is my WP Easy logo. If we look at the um, conditions for, uh, for that first one, what we're doing, and I had to do a, a custom function on it because Jet Engine is storing the uh, the checkbox list as a array of keys with a true or false. I couldn't find any conditions in the dynamic data where I could actually look at the array, look inside the array at the key, and then check the value. So I had to create a custom PHP function to do that. So what I've done is created a custom PHP function. A WPG uh, GE get page option and I'm looking for my F alt logo so back over to my code here and that would come down to this I put some comments on here function down here so there's my function I'm calling from bricks uh, dynamic um, conditionals um, with what option am I looking for so if we go back to there where were we so I'm calling this function with f alt logo. 
So that's going to call this function with f alt logo. Um, so we're getting our meta. Um, we're saying if the uh, if the option is set, return the option. So it's not going to return a true and a false or a false for that. Otherwise, return an error because there is no such option. So this will just uh, error out if we have given the wrong uh, option um, here. So if that option doesn't exist, we're just going to generate a WordPress error. Otherwise, it's going to return a boolean true, not a boolean true, sorry, a string true or a string false. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that if this alt logo is not equal to true, I want this to display. On the second one, I'm saying if the alt logo is equal to true, I want it to display. So they're just the opposite. So the only difference between that logo and that logo is this uh, comparator. So the first one, it's not equal to. On the second one, it's equal to. And what that gives us is this here where we can, uh, so if I say alternate logo and update that, and I'm on my get logo at the moment, refresh. I'm on my easy logo for that page. I'm on my get logo by default. So that controls both. So there's two parts to this. One is controlling the body classes um, based on whatever switches we've enabled here. And the other is the custom function here um, for our Bricks dynamic data. Uh, I haven't looked at this, what I would do with this in Elementor. I'm not sure if Elementor has conditionals like this yet. I've got to have to look at that. or We need a third party to do that. Uh, but certainly in Bricks, all you have to do is call this method with that option that you're looking for, and you'll get, if it exists, a true or false. If you've given a value that doesn't even exist, you're going to get a WordPress error. Okay, so that's pretty much the code. Um, I think it's pretty cool because you can do whatever you want just by flicking switches um, and you can change uh, you know, the theme of the page, the display of elements as a group. So instead of using individual um, you know, conditionals for individual things, like for example, you might have a page with ads, a page with no ads, and on that page with no ads, you just flick the switch to say no ads and use that to hide all the ads. So I think it's a really, really cool way of doing it. Love to think, love to hear what uh, you think. Um, so if you like this thing, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.